I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook and today I want to talk about the role of coolant in machining. So what is the role of coolant in CNC? Here's something that surprises most when they hear it. While cooling is a role of coolant, it isn't the most important role. Chip clearing and lubrication are actually more important. Are you surprised? I know I was when I heard that, so let's delve into it a little deeper. Chip clearing is the number one role of coolant. Look, the hardest thing your cutters do is remove chips as they're being cut. If you exceed the allowable chip load of the cutter, the chips pack up, jam, and the cutter breaks suddenly. I encourage machinists to be paranoid about chip clearing. In other words, do everything you can to make sure the chips are being blown clear of the cut. Recutting chips is bad for cutters. It increases the work and wear they're doing tremendously. In harder materials and materials that work harden, the chips can significantly shorten tool life. Think about it like this. Imagine taking a handful of hardened metal chips and dumping them right in the path of your cutter. That can't be good, right? So getting the chips out of there is the number one thing your coolant does for you. Did you notice how the allowable chip load goes down as you cut deeper and deeper? Slots have a lower chip load they can take than open peripheral milling too. This is all because those are situations where it becomes harder and harder to clear out the chips. The cutter's helix has to do all the work. Think about it being like back pressure on plumbing. If the helix is trying to dump the chips out, but there's already chips piled high on top of the cut, then that cutter's job is just that much harder. Not clearing the chips limits chip loads and feed rates, and that will limit your productivity. Okay, let's talk about the second most important job of coolant, and that is lubrication. What we're trying to do here is eliminate BUE, or built up edge. Certain materials have a chemical affinity for your cutter. The chips will try to weld themselves to the cutting edge and obviously that's a very bad thing. Lubrication helps those chips slide off the edge without welding. If you've been at it very long you must have seen a cutter like the one here. What happens is the aluminum on that cutter stuck to it because there wasn't enough lubrication. It welded right to the cutting edge and pretty soon it builds up just like taffy on the cutter. Here's another thing most don't realize is important and comes from lubrication and that is lubrication will improve your surface finish. Chips are much less likely to scratch if there is a lubricant to lower the friction and stop them rubbing very hard against your part. Okay, what about cooling? I know you've been sitting there going, hey, wait, coolant is called coolant for a reason, right? Is cooling unimportant? Does it not really matter? Well, here's the thing. With modern feeds and speeds, and especially when climb milling, most of the heat is carried away in the chips. If you're clearing those chips quickly so they can't transfer that heat right back in the workpiece, you are helping to keep it cool. Clearing the chips also helps prevent recutting, which will also help keep your cutter cooler too. There are, though, cases where the actual direct cooling effect of coolant matters a lot. So let's look at those cases. Okay, on the plus side, there are materials that don't conduct heat very well. It just stays there and builds up because the material won't conduct it away. Titanium is a great example. It needs all the help it can get to remove the heat. So coolant is definitely helping cool when you're working on titanium. Aluminum, on the other hand, conducts heat very well. So well we use it to make heat sinks, for example. So coolant is playing less of a cooling role with aluminum. Also, helping remove the heat faster reduces the tendency to work harden on materials subject to that. Doesn't eliminate it but it helps. So again, materials that work harden benefit from the cooling effects of coolant. But there are downsides. You may have heard that coolant can reduce the life of carbide, particularly with inserts. This is due to something called shock cooling. At microscopic scales, coolant spatters your insert 
as a series of droplets. So your cutter gets super hot cutting off a chip and a big fat coolant droplet lands on it, turns to steam and radically cools the spot where it hits. That's shock cooling. It causes rapid expansion and then rapid contraction of the material. That leads to micro cracks and they can radically shorten your tool life. Always check whether your insert manufacturer recommends coolant with their inserts. Every insert is different and sometimes they may tell you to turn off the coolant. When they do, be sure to turn it off, but also be sure to keep an air blast going to clear the chips out, because remember, we've got to keep those chips clear. Here's another negative. Certain coatings require fairly high temperatures to activate and reach their full potency. Titanium aluminum nitride is a great example. With these kinds of coatings, Coolant can keep them from reaching their operating temperature, which means shorter tool life and likely slower feeds and speeds. Again, check with the manufacturer to understand whether their coating should be used with coolant. Let's talk about a few ways we can make our coolant more effective. As important as it is, there are premium coolant options out there that you can specify on your machine. Programmable coolant nozzles, like I'm showing here, let you aim the coolant by remote control. You can store the target where that aim goes in the tool table, and some models even oscillate the nozzle so it is more effective at sweeping chips away. Check out the photo. Different length tooling means aiming the coolant in a new spot every tool change. If you do this, you can get higher feed rates and more productivity. But how many of you will manually re-aim the coolant nozzles after each tool change? I know I don't. With a programmable coolant nozzle, though, you can automate the process and capture that lost productivity through spindle coolant. Oh, even better than a programmable coolant nozzle. With through spindle coolant, the coolant transfers through passages in the spindle and passages inside the tool to come out right at the end of the tool. That's where coolant needs the most help. And it's not sensitive to tool length because it's already feeding to the end of the tool. Through spindle coolant is great for deep holes and slots and gives a real advantage in terms of higher chip loads and feed rates that can really matter for your jobs. I save the best for last. High pressure coolant. With high pressure coolant we're using a special pump that will radically increase the coolant pressure. It's just like a pressure washer, and you know how much better a pressure washer works than your garden hose, right? Typically, you deliver high pressure coolant through spindle as well. This gives you the ability to remove chips from the deepest holes and slots. It results in much shorter cycle times due to higher chip loads, and it even improves surface finish because the chips get blasted out of there so fast that they cause minimal scratching of the part. Okay, let's compare the performance impact each of these methods has on three different materials. Now I've used CNC Cookbook's G-Wizard Feeds and Speeds Calculator to run a simulation based on a half inch end mill running in aluminum, 4130 alloy steel, and titanium with each one of the coolant options so you can compare. The scale is calibrated to show regular flood coolant as 1.0. We can see programmable coolant nozzles help a bit. You get about a 5% higher material removal rate. Through spindle coolant helps a lot more. You get at least 15% higher material removal rates. But high pressure coolant is really awesome. We're seeing a 230% improvement for alloy steel and 189% for titanium in this scenario. It doesn't take long for these machine options to pay for themselves when you see this much performance increase. Get your hands on a feeds and speeds calculator that handles these advanced cooling options and see for yourself what they'll do for your jobs. I'm Bob Warfield, thanks for listening and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video.